Hey, Walter Sorrell's back with another Knife Makers Friday Five. Today we're going to talk about knife hardness. So I got a question from a uh, viewer recently, uh, an Indonesian guy um, named Nalom. I hope I'm pronouncing his name right. Um, anyway, he asked uh, the following question. May I ask you a question about knife hardness, if you don't mind? Let's say a knife is 50 uh, Rockwell hardness before, hardening pro before the hardening process. How many HRC points will you gain after the hardening process? Will it be 51, 52, or others? Two, is it useless to do two or three times the hardening process? Uh, how many times... Um, of repeating the hardening process uh, can you do to reach maximum hardness potential. Number three, in your video I saw that you put the knife for two hours in an oven after a hardening process um, and what will happen if we don't do that? Would you agree with me uh, if I say that heat treatment will reduce the hardness? Thank you, Nalone. Um, so basically what I want to do here is talk really really generally about heat treating, what the purpose is, and uh, you know, what it will do for your knives. Um, you know, I've done a lot of videos where I get into the weeds a little bit more in terms of the heat treatment of specific steels. I don't know that I really just kind of backed up and tried to go over the most basic uh, notions about heat treatment. So that's what I'm going to do here today. So let's back up a little bit and talk about steel. Steel, by definition, is composed of iron and carbon. Um, it's an alloy, meaning that it's a mixture of metals. If you don't have carbon and iron, then it's not steel. Now, steel also, to complicate things a little bit, contains a variety of other alloying elements sometimes. Those might include vanadium, molybdenum, uh, manganese, uh, chromium, um, just a whole wide variety of things. And each of those has an effect on uh, the steel, how hard it is, how shock resistant it is, heat treating characteristics, whole wide range of, uh, you know, aspects of the steel. But let's put aside the actual composition of the steel. Another really, really critical aspect of steel, and this is, you know, in many respects why it's probably the most important widely used uh, material in modern life other than maybe plastics. Um, when you apply heat to steel in various ways, it will affect uh, the physical composition of the steel and that in turn will affect the characteristics of the steel. Shock resistance, hardness, all kinds of other things. So when we use the term heat treatment, we're actually referring kind of generically to a whole wide range of things that you can do to affect those characteristics of the steel. Um, some of these include annealing, um, tempering, hardening, um, spheroidizing. When we talk about knives, the single most important thing that we're trying to do is achieve a relatively high hardness for the steel. Secondarily, we want to make sure that once we get the steel relatively hard, that it will not snap when we use it, uh, you know, that it's sufficiently shock resistant to do whatever tasks we want to do with that knife. So, uh, the process that we use to harden a knife is referred to generically as quenching or hardening, um, and there's a lot of nuance to that, and I'm not going to get into it right now, but basically what happens when you make a knife you know, all things being equal, you buy a piece of steel. Uh, it has to be the right kind of steel that's appropriate for knife making. But once, you know, once you jump over that bar, you're typically going to buy it in uh, a soft form. And uh, that's going to, on the Rockwell's uh, hardness scale, C scale, typically going to be somewhere around 30 Rockwell hardness. Uh, then what you're going to do is you're going to heat that steel up and it very much depends on the kind of steel that you're using as to how hot you're going to go, how long you're going to hold it there. There's 
enormous amounts of nuance to this whole thing and you can get really deep into the weeds on this and kind of drive yourself crazy with it but the basic notion that you're going to do with every knife is you're going to heat it up to some kind of temperature and then you're going to cool it down fairly rapidly when i say fairly rapidly it depends on the kind of steel that you're using high carbon steels typically have to be cooled quite rapidly stainless steels not so much you can typically heat treat a stainless steel by just heating it up to whatever the target temperature is maintaining it at whatever uh, time that you're supposed to maintain it and then air air cooling it typically you're going to have a jump in hardness when you quench the steel of around 30 uh, rockwell points that's on the c scale Again, lots of nuances, lots of different possibilities, but in the most basic kinds of situations, you're going to get a steel from the mill that's around 30 on the C scale, the Rockwell C scale, and you're going to quench it, and it's going to end up somewhere in the general vicinity of 60 on the Rockwell scale. So after you've finished the hardening process, uh, the knife is very, very hard. And that would, like I say, typically that's going to be around 60 Rockwell. It might be 65 Rockwell. It might be, you know, 59, but it's going to be somewhere in that range. At that point, it's very, very brittle. So if you don't do a second operation, also generally, you know, in the umbrella of heat treating, uh, and that secondary operation is called tempering. If you don't do the tempering, then the knife is going to be too brittle and under most normal kinds of use there's a good chance that the edge is going to chip that the knife might even break in half uh, it's, it's just very bad and so in virtually all cases of normal knives you're going to do hardening and then you're going to do tempering where you bring back the um, the hardness a little bit tempering is typically done at a much much lower temperature so Typical hardening temperatures are going to be between around 1500 all the way up to as much as 2000, maybe even a little north of that, depending on the kind of steel. But for typical knife steels, it's going to be between uh, 1500 and, uh, two, and 2000 degrees, where it widely varies depending on the steel. So uh, the tempering temperature typically is going to be a, a lot lower than that maybe somewhere in the neighborhood of 400 degrees. So without going, you know, kind of bullet point by bullet point through Nalom's question, but I, I think that I'm going to address all of them eventually. Uh, let me make a couple points here. Uh, the first point is that in all normal cases, knives have to be heat treated in order to reach their full capacity. Um, normally the way that works, now there are exceptions to this, but normally the way that, that that works is the highest possible hardness that you're going to get is going to happen with one quench and it's going to be at the end of that quench. Now, there may be situations where you have to cryo quench and all kinds of different things but fundamentally the hardening process is done one time and that gets you to your highest possible hardness which again may be 60 62 65 67 it all depends on the steel but once you reach that point now you have a fairly brittle knife and you need to dial that hardness back and that's where the tempering process comes in. So I hope I got around to answering all of Nalom's questions here. Always enjoy getting questions from you guys. Uh, by the way, you know, probably the easiest way to get questions answered from me is email. Um, a lot of guys send me stuff by messenger or leave comments uh, in the videos. Comments in the videos are absolutely the worst way to get hold of me. The reason for that is that, um, you know, I've got hundreds of videos by now thousands of comments every month and there's just absolutely no way I can read all those things much less answer them um, not because I don't want to it's just impractical um, so uh, anyway it, it, you know I, I always enjoy getting questions and um, you know I think this is a great forum here on the Friday five videos to answer some of those questions for you all right thanks and see you soon
Thanks for watching, guys. If you feel like you got something out of this video, don't forget to subscribe. Also, click on the link to Patreon for a great way to give back to the channel. Plus, check me out on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. Links in the description. If you want something sharp and pointy, maybe a gift for yourself or one of the cooler people in your life, check out my Tactics Armory website and pick up one of our tactical or outdoor knives. And finally, if you want to learn to make hamons or Japanese swords, check out waltersorrelsblades.com where you can find videos about how I make hamons as well as forging, mounting, polishing, and fittings for Japanese swords. Thanks and see you soon!